For those of you who saw my original video on the DIY floating biofilter, this is an update after four years of letting the island do its own thing. The first year proved that pretty much anything planted on the island will grow with only a couple of inches of soil without watering after the initial two weeks of light watering just to get the soil to wick naturally. At this point, everything above soil is healthy, but the root system under the island is not fully established. During winters, the island gets buried under snow and ice with no apparent effect on its ability to float. Each spring, the island is the site of a standoff between mallards and Canada geese for a nesting habitat. This photo was taken the second summer the mint and strawberries came back and I threw wildflower seeds on the rest of the island. They took off with a vengeance. With a mass of feathery roots below the surface, the island helped keep the water clean, though it didn't and does not eliminate silt buildup on the bottom of the pond. I still have to scoop that out every spring. And my pond has a liner, by the way. In the four winters the island has been in place, Two of them had record snowfalls that lasted for months. The island has remained afloat even though the styrofoam is completely waterlogged. One thing I would change in the design would be to use a dense blue polystyrene instead of packaging styrofoam. Now the spring, another standoff. This spring a Canada goose plucked every teensy bit of dead grass from the island and she piled it in the center of the for a nest. She destroyed bits of the spray foam around the edges in search of dead grass and for whatever reason I think perhaps the island was too close to the house and they felt exposed or perhaps her weight made for a soggy nest or perhaps because of the mallards cruising the waters constantly the geese uh, finally abandoned the island and the mallards took ownership of the pond. This video was actually taken in the third year. Notice that the island has been completely taken over by grass, except for a few strawberry plants struggling to hold their ground. Again, the island has not been watered except for the very first two weeks in year one. And I purposely allowed it to go wild to see how it would fare. In May of this year, I took ownership of the island for yet another purpose, a duckling daytime nursery. We bought three magpie ducklings that need to be kept warm until they're feathered, they feather out at eight weeks. And at five weeks, they are outgrowing my shower stall. I mean, they're almost the size of our chickens. And they stink to high heaven. So with a loose pen around the island, they can spend sunny days outside, learn how to forage and have access to the pond. And I can have a stink-free bathroom for a few hours. A win-win solution. Notice you the exposed edge of the island caused by the nesting goose. I'm not sure the spray foam around the edge is the best design feature on this floating biofilter. If you have any suggestions for a better way to design the perimeter, please comment below. Again, the island has been very useful in maintaining clear water, though it does not eliminate silt buildup. It's been great habitat for wild birds, a hiding place for fish, and a watering station for bees. I'd love to hear about or have a link to your own floating biofilter experiment. And thanks for watching.